Hi there, I'm Sarami, and today I'm gonna to be sewing the Sierra Fleece Pullover by Five Out of Four Patterns, and I'm doing the color blocked view. Uh, it's kind of a casual sew along because I do figure a couple things out along the way, but I try and edit it down as much as possible. Um, I do fix something on the zipper placket at the end, but you'll get noted during that section because I figure out a different way I think it would look good, and the end you don't have to do, but I'd go back and do. Um, and let's see, what else do I want to tell you? This isn't sewn like the instructions, so if you're looking for a fleece pullover that looks a lot like something that's finished, you know, in a store-bought, ready-to-wear version. This is probably going to get you pretty close to that kind of finishing. And um, I probably do a couple of things different with the pattern, but I don't change any of the pattern pieces to get this look here. Um, I do mention some things like I probably wouldn't top stitch this again. I didn't top stitch my sleeves. I might take it out. I probably won't. I'm using a hemp fleece, hemp cotton fleece here, which is a little bit of a unique fabric. Hemp is kind of uh, strong. It's like a strong fiber to sew on. So even though fleece can be somewhat lightweight and this is pretty um, soft and floppy, it still is a pretty resilient fiber. Um, you can hear it in my cover stitch machine. So there's something to note about that. I think most people are gonna probably be using a polar fleece or something fuzzy. This just lets you see all the details really well using a nice smooth fleece and um, because the polar fleece kind of obscures all that. So the other thing I do is I do cover stitch hems and I give you lots of tips on how to do that. And I bind the neck collar here or the neck band and the collar here. The placket is completely finished on the inside. Um, and that's probably all I need to note. I don't do side pockets either. So I kind of tried to make this as traditional as possible. And if you're looking for something even more traditional and maybe you want something with like a behind facing, I have a men's quarter zip hoodie sew along that I'll link in the description. You can check that out. If you're wanting that kind of like, you know, for lack of a better uh, term, that Patagonia fleece look, that's the video to watch. I really dive deep into that and kind of deep into that video when I go to finally sew it together, you can see my final method that I chose to make it as accessible for a home sewist to sew a full-on fleece hoodie that you would buy off of the rack um, with your home sewing machine. So, all right, enjoy. All right, the pieces you're gonna need are the sleeve. If you're doing the color, color block, you're gonna need to follow the directions on the pattern piece where you cut away this inset right here and use the pattern piece to create the color block sections. And you need four of those. So you need two uh, fronts and two backs, one for each sleeve. And then you need the sleeve portion here. You're gonna need collars and you're gonna have an outer collar and you're gonna have an inner collar. And I'm gonna use the inside of my fleece, so just the back side of my outer fabric as the inner towards the body, so it's nice and soft. I'm also going to interface this piece because the fabric I'm using doesn't have a whole lot of body and it is a natural fiber, so I can do that. Uh, if you're using something a little heavier and thicker, you probably don't have to worry about that. Here is the back. You need one of those on the fold. And you're also going to need the yoke for the contrast color block version. And then we have our front here also cut on the fold. And then you have the yoke as well. Make sure you don't confuse which piece or which edge goes towards the neck. This little curvier side this is a little flatter. This is the neck. It'd be really easy to accidentally flip it over. But you can see when you lay your piece there that you get more of a gentle curve. Uh, rather than if it was flipped, you would get a little bit of a wing right here. So just note that. And then on your front, I have added a piece of fusible interfacing to the front center where the zipper is gonna go. And Mine's a natural fiber, so I could do that. Um, you most likely don't need this if you're using like a polar fleece or something a little bit heavier. Um, I 
fused it on there and you can see that I used a pinking shear to cut it out. It's less likely to show on the right side when you cut it with this pinking edge. I think I got that from the Angela Wolf YouTube channel, which is really amazing. Um, and then I've already drawn my box on here, which is a half inch wide. And then you're gonna do the length that is in the instructions for the zipper length you're doing. I'm doing the nine inch length. As far as your notions, you're gonna need a zipper that is the length that you're choosing to do. I don't have the right length, so I'm gonna be shortening mine, and this is actually a separating zipper. I'm gonna be using it. It's a little heavy coil. It's probably a 5.0. Um, I think uh, anything in that 4.5, um, 2.5 to 4.5 is probably a better weight zipper coil, but this will do the trick. It is kind of an outdoor kind of fleece sweatshirt. And then the, because of the way I'm sewing this, where I'm gonna be doing it like a um, store-bought kind of factory-made outerwear apparel fleece or, um, sweatshirt, I'm going to be binding the front there where the zipper is. So I'm gonna be binding the bottom of the collar. So you need a piece of fabric that is one and a half inches wide by the length of your collar. And I haven't even interfaced mine. So this is just a really lightweight jersey rib or jersey. Um, and it's very curly. So if this wasn't interfaced, it'd be rolling up into a tube, which is really hard to use. And because this isn't an area that needs to stretch, this is totally fine if I'm gonna do something. It still has a little bit of give. This just gives it a lot of stability. Um, and then I'm gonna use the same stuff for the zipper sides right here. So this is going to bind the edge of the zipper to the garment and it gives it a lot of stability. It makes it nice clean finish and it's nice and soft on the inside. Um, and I recommend interfacing your fabric first and then cutting it out. It's a lot easier, but you don't really need something that is super stretchy like the outer fabric is. And uh, you definitely don't want something very heavy though. You want something kind of lightweight that's easy to bind. And don't worry about the binding, it's gonna be really easy. Um, I got this roll of Trico that I thought was gonna be stretchy going this way and it wasn't, and um, which I was really disappointed about, but <laughs> I've made so much use out of this three inch roll of Trico for all kinds of things just like this, waistbands and things like that. Even though I thought it was meant for knits and it would be stretchy, it is stretchy going across. That doesn't really help me out. So I'm just using it everywhere else and it's been really helpful and I'll link it in the description um, so you can check it out. All right, so don't forget you need your zipper, you need your binding, and to prep your front because that's pretty much all the little bit fiddly things we have to do and then we can get to the sewing. Okay, our first steps are to get our collar together and then we're also going to get our contrast yokes to the body of the sweatshirt. So we're going to sew the front yokes at the seam to the what looks like the shoulder seam to the front. And then on the back, we're gonna attach the back yoke to the top seam on the back of the body. And then for the collar, we're going to sew the top long edge, the one that angles out right here. We're gonna sew this long edge right here, inner collar to outer collar, right sides together. And remember, I'm using the wrong side of my fabric as the right side for the inside collar. So I'll put it together like this. And then we're going to sew the shoulders of the fronts to the backs and the collar to the neckline. We're gonna do all that on the serger. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is this collar. So remember I have the inner collar and the outer collar and we're gonna line up this long edge and we're gonna sew it right sides together, 3 8 inch seam. There shouldn't be any stretching or anything, but because one of my collars is interfaced, it's going to give me a little bit of a headache because the top layer is probably gonna be more relaxed. This is how I calm it down. I'm just pushing my finger there to kind of stabilize it and make sure that um, it doesn't slip away. But you can see this edge right here is a lot looser. It's not as stable since it's not interfaced. You can see it's just really floppy. And what I'm doing with my fingers, I'm kind of pushing it like this gently and holding it as it goes through.
You don't want to stretch the outer collar in order to fit it. And if worst case scenario, we get to the end and this um, inner collar is hanging off, we'll just even it up since we know that the outer collar is correct. This fabric, because I'm using a hemp, hemp tends to relax. All right, so for mine, I'm gonna trim off this little bit of extra. You probably had none of that, but the hemp is kind of a tricky fabric to sew with. Just gonna cut my thread tail a little bit down. All right, now we're gonna sew our yokes to the front. So here we have our front. And remember, you wanna make sure you get the correct edge towards the neckline. And so you see how there's this narrower point here. This is the neckline side. So this narrow point here, neckline side. And you can always just test it out and look at it and see, all right, if I overlap that three quarters of an inch, which is the two seam allowances, do I get a nice smooth transition? But when you flip it over, it is going to look like you have a lot hanging off the edge and that's correct. You wanna overlap this to where this three eighths inch seam is intersect intersecting right there. And then that way you'll have the correct seam line. Because of the width stitch I have on my serger, I am trimming off a little bit. Some, you, some sergers you won't have to, some will. It just depends on the seam allowance of your um, stitch. But the seam allowance on the garment is 3 8 so all said and done, you just want your left needle to be lined up on the seam line. It doesn't really matter what else is happening. And you'll know you've got it when those two points are intersected right at the seam. And then when you turn up your piece like this, you get a nice smooth transition of your neckline there. Okay, so let's do our other front. You'll notice I don't lift my presser foot a lot and that's just because my machine allows me to lift it up by holding it right here. I don't need to go back here. That's just a feature of my machine. I really like it. And even if your machine doesn't have that feature, a lot of time you can kind of get away with doing it. All right, so we have the shoulders on our front. Let's do our back. I won't have the same issues I did with the collar because none of these are interfaced. It's just because one piece was interfaced. I'm always going to the end here. I line it up on the seam line, get it all situated, and go. Pull this, make sure my raw edges are lined up. So now we have our yoke here, and we're gonna put our shoulders together. So put your front to your back at the shoulder seams. And same thing, we're gonna do our 3 8 inch seam. All right, so we're gonna prep our center front before we attach our collar. And we're also gonna decide if we wanna top stitch any of these um, yokes or anything like that. So depending on your fabric, you might decide that you want to top stitch some of these details to kind of make them look a little bit more polished. You can put them through the cover stitch machine if you want by pressing the seam allowances up toward the yoke, um, or you can top stitch it. I'm gonna give it a shot on my machine, see how it looks when I top stitch. I won't, I don't need to back stitch, so I can always take it out. Hopefully I like it because uh, taking things out on knits is no fun. Make sure your garment's always up on the table so it's not pulling. Alright, so let's uh, trim off these wings here. Do our back yoke. I think doing, uh, choosing top stitch is completely dependent upon what fabric you've picked. Some fabrics are, you're just, it's just never gonna look that great. Um, cover stitch is probably a really good option. All right. 
Now that we have these top stitched, I feel more comfortable about trimming the little tails off there. All right, so now let's look at our neckline here. We're gonna sew a rectangle, the one that we drew onto the garment here. So it's a half inch wide. You wanna make sure it's perfectly centered. I can't stress this enough if you're in doubt at all. Make sure that you've um, folded your garment in half. What I did was I folded mine in half. I ironed it and got a gentle crease. You can kind of maybe still see it a little bit there. And then I centered my piece of interfacing over that fold line. And then I used the fold line to draw my box because if your box at all goes slanty, it is extremely noticeable on the front of one of these. All right, so we're just gonna stitch this box to stabilize the fabric. And I say you go smaller rather than larger, so go on the inside of your outline. This is pretty much if you didn't interface. If you've interfaced, you probably don't need to do this step. You want nice crisp corners. If you know you're sewing in a straight line, don't worry about it. The interfacing might lie to you and tell you that you're not, especially mine with the lines. Um, and so just don't sweat it. That's not your final line. All right, now we're gonna cut this rectangle. Don't worry, everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna slit right into the center here. Go to about uh, within, you know, three eighths or a half inch of the bottom there. And now we're gonna cut into each of these corners and you wanna be pretty precise here. Don't remember, don't worry about if your cutting looks kind of messy on the inside. This is seam allowance, no one's gonna see it. Really all that matters here is that you've slid it down through into this box straight down and then you get this corners nice and sharp. So you wanna go right up to the stitching without going through. The, the closer you get, but don't go too far, um, you will get nice crisp corners. So you can see mine, this is what mine looks like right now. The black, or it's actually navy blue, thread line is my box and then I've cut almost right up to it. It's a lot closer than it looks on the camera. All right. So now we have our slit there and now we can put on our collar. All right. So find your outer collar and this is the neckline edge. And what I like to do is fold it in half and we're just going to put a tiny little nip at that center so you have a halfway point. And let's make sure there's one on the garment. There's one right there. And we're gonna line this up. And we're gonna sew this neckline all the way around if you wanna get an idea. It's not probably not gonna stretch. All right, so we're gonna line up this raw edge to the raw edge of the neck, of the collar and we're gonna overlock this on. And once I get going, now I start arranging. I line up my center back notches there. Because my collar is interfaced, it's gonna give me a little bit of a problem. All right, so we're just going to pull this up towards the neckline and make sure it's nice and relaxed. So it's evenly distributed since we don't have any other notches. We're gonna put this shoulder seam toward the back when we get there. All right, so now we were at our halfway point. We're gonna line up our center front collar raw edges all together. And we're gonna finish out. Remember when you get to your shoulder seam to press it toward the back, which is away from you now. All right, the last little bit was kind of tricky. Hopefully I didn't get any tucks. 
All right, so now we have our collar on our neckline edge there, just like this. And now we're gonna put in our zipper. All right, so get your zipper out and all your binding pieces. And first one we're gonna use is the one for the collar edge. So get that really long one out. And my short ones were just roughly the length of this slit plus a little bit. I just made them a little bit longer, not too much. All right, so if you're not very good at binding, that's okay. This is an excellent place to practice because we're not too worried about it. <clears throat> it doesn't have to look great on both sides. It only has to look good on one side and that's gonna be easy to do. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is from on the inside collar, on the wrong side of the inside collar, we're gonna put our binding right side to wrong side of the collar. So you can see this is the outer shirt right here. See, there's the interfacing on the inside. So this is the wrong side of my shirt and this is the right side of my binding. And we're just going to put it down there. You can overlock it even if you like. And I'm just gonna put it on with kind of a, like a fat quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can gently pull your binding if you like. It'll kind of help the last step when we're almost done with the whole collar. All right, so now we're gonna turn it to the right side and we're gonna turn, we can just cut this extra off here. We're going to turn our binding to the right side of the inner collar and we're just gonna turn it under. And if you need to pin this, that's fine. If you wanna iron it, that's fine. Um, it's probably not as tricky as it seems because what we're gonna be doing basically is we're folding it, kind of meeting those raw edges together and then folding it along that point where they meet. And then this fold line just needs to go just past that stitch line. So if your fabric is really light colored, you'll wanna make sure that you use the binding to cover up that seam line. Mine is pretty forgiving. I can barely see the stitch line, but I'm definitely, I can definitely see it. You probably can't on the camera, but um, I'm definitely gonna be using that fold line to cover up that stitching. And then we're gonna stitch on that fold. And remember, we don't care what it looks like on this side. This is the inside of the collar. No one's gonna see that. So all you're caring about is getting this fold just past that stitch line. And then you're gonna put a line of stitches right there. This is where something like my awl is really, really handy. I can turn it and then I use the awl like a pointy finger and it kind of holds it in place. It's kind of how I can get away with not using pins most of the time because the awl lets me secure things as I'm approaching. All right, so now we have our binding on. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it's not perfect, but that's okay. We're going to use it to clean finish the raw edge of our neckline here, or really the overlocking, and it'll look nice and clean on the inside. All right, so now it's time to do our zipper. It's gonna be easy peasy. All right, so we're going to first, first we're gonna tack our zipper at the top here. We're gonna tack these little extra lengths so we're gonna fold this down and I like it so that when it's folding down, this little fold is lined up to the top of the zipper. So there's two ways to do it. You can fold it to where this fold is lining up along the coil like this. And I, I bet you can see that that's gonna be a little bit problematic sometimes like that. So I like to do it where it's going along the top there. That means it puts the fold along the coil on the inside, but no one's gonna see that. And you're just gonna tack it down with your machine. This is when my awl is really helpful because this is kind of fiddly. Just do it in the seam allowance or on the edge of the tape here. Nobody's gonna see that. And same thing on this side. Do try and get it um, at the same point on each side too. Like you wanna be right up against the teeth or wherever it lets you bend it back. All 
All right, and let, get rid of any of these threads. You don't want these poking out, so make sure if you have any stray ones like this one here, just get rid of those so that they don't peek in out of your seam. You don't want that to be the thing that brings it all down, right? Okay, so now we're going to line up our zipper face down so the wrong side of the zipper is facing up. And we're gonna line up that turn back edge to the seam of the collar. This collar is at quite a steep angle here, so this may not look like it lines up that great, but it'll be fine when we're on the seam line. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of trim this and kind of make that transition a little smoother there. Get rid of those threads. If you need to secure your stitching of your seam, go for it. You don't wanna worry about it. And we're gonna put our zipper face down. So basically we're thinking of, right here is the seam line on the zipper tape, and we want that to intersect on the, full, the seam of the collars on the seam line as well. So we're gonna put that right up there. We're not worried about the binding quite yet. We're just gonna get this started. Push the seam allowance of the collar up. You're not sewing on the collar, on the inner collar, just the outer collar. And if you have to, if you're if you're using a or sewing a pretty big sweatshirt, what you can do is turn it inside out and then sew on the right side. It'll be a little easier, and I'll show you in a second what I mean. All right, so here's this little fold that we did, remember on the other side? So if you want, you can kind of slide it a little further into the seam allowance, just to make sure that those folds don't get messy. Now, when you approach your next seam, make sure you push it straight up. And then now we're gonna grab this piece of binding and we're just gonna lay it on here, right there. Raw edge, just make sure the raw edge is poked up above the neckline edge, like, I don't know, like a half inch or so. You may need to switch to a zipper foot as well. I don't, um, and my zipper foot isn't the greatest. My zipper tape is really wide and that's why I'm able to get away with not using a zipper foot. All right, so now we're approaching the cut of that, that uh, box that we cut earlier right there. So we're just going to so right up to that cut. Sometimes it's a little easier to do this from the inside, but it's easier to hold the binding from the outside. All right, so we're just gonna get to that point. And you can kind of see where the level of your cut right there is because you can see your triangle. So just get right there. We can double check it. We can flip it around. We can double check it and make sure, oh, maybe we wanna go one or two stitches longer, but I think this will be okay. All right, so let's trim our binding. I'm just gonna trim it like three quarters of an inch past that edge there, that or that seam where it ended. All right, now turn it to the right side, or to the inside. All right, so here's the inside of my collar. We're gonna take the binding. We're gonna pull it to the inside here, and we're probably gonna to have to fold up this edge. Turn it in here. And we're gonna turn it under. We're gonna edge stitch, just like we did on the neckline, but you're gonna stay completely on the zipper and the zipper tape. Don't go past that line. No one's gonna see this because it's gonna turn back on itself. This is just a nice way to finish the stitching, or the zipper tape. And then we'll go off the edge right there. This is just a raw edge right there. All right, and so now, this is how our zipper's looking so far on the right side. And what, see, even though you can see all this right here, once you're wearing it, or even if you top stitch this opening, it's gonna be turned back on itself like this, and you're not gonna see that interfacing or your markings in there. And then the collar, it's gonna come down here and it's gonna be all clean finished right there as well. 
All right, let's do the other side. So one of the ways you can sew on this is sometimes it's easier to do this with the sweatshirt inside out and then you can sew it from the right side just like this. That way the garment's above the bed of the machine and it kind of makes it a little less risky that you'll catch the garment on the underside. Especially if your garment's getting pretty big and heavy, you kind of want, you want to make sure all of it's on the table. All right, so now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to zip up our zipper, tuck it in the shirt here. And now we're going to mark on our zipper where the collar seam is on the other side so that we can make sure we can do our best that we can to get our collar seams lined up, the top of our collar lined up, because those are the kind of the two persnickety spots with this. All right, so let's look at this here. So on the, on the top of my zipper, I'm just going to have to do my best to try and make sure that I start at the exact same spot where I positioned it on this side. But over here, we're going to want right here. So let's put a line straight across where that neck seam is. <clears throat> if we need something a little more precise, go for it. Don't take a chance on this. All right, I think that's pretty good. I think I want it just a tad higher. All right, so let's put our sweatshirt inside out. And now we know that that line goes to the seam we're sewing on the other side. All right, so line this seam up to that line there. And we're going to pin this. This is non-negotiable, just like that. And then we're going to try and get this in the exact same spot on this side as well. Let's trim this to be a little bit more even. Right there. All right. And now this little, you know, this little cut that we've done is kind of going to kind of act like a seam allowance. Well, it is a seam allowance, right? But see now that it's been, you know, in this little, now, now that there's a slit right there, it kind of is swinging freely, right? So it's a seam allowance. So we'll line it up to the edge there. And we're going to sew this in. Now, if you want to baste it first and then check your zipper to make sure that everything's lining up before you put your final stitch in, I think that's a great idea. All right, get our whole garment up there. Don't want to get this stretched out. You're hopefully seeing that this is going to line up from left to right across the zipper, that it looks like it's, you know, pretty straight. It's kind of hard to tell at this point, but you're just doing your best. The zipper is really wide for this. All right, let's give it the test and see. We have our little triangles not stitched down yet. Just poke it in there, it'll be fine. And let's see, I think we can work with that. It looks pretty good. I think that the one thing I might do is make my seam allowance a little bigger here because you see it's narrower between the teeth and the seam right here. And I'd like it to look like that there too. Maybe once the seam allowance is pressed that way, it would be more, but yeah, I think I can get that a little, maybe it's just a little crooked. Probably when I went over the thickness there. So let's just straighten that out a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so now to secure the bottom of my zipper here, we're going to go to where that triangle is right there. See it right there? And we're just gonna stitch straight across catching that triangle. You don't have to be perfectly precise here. You just wanna catch it um, and then the um, other stitching is gonna do the trick. So try and go across. If you're not using a, a coil chain sewable zipper, you have to be really, really careful. If you're using anything like a metal or the big chunky um, plastic teeth, you're probably going to have to um, either hand stitch the little triangle down or do something different because unless you're not shortening your zipper, if you're using the right length zipper, you probably don't have a problem at all. All right, so let's get rid of this thread here. And now we're gonna cut across the zipper. All right, and then let's just bind our other edge of our zipper since we didn't do that while we were sewing it in this time. All right, so we're just gonna place this, you know, like we did before, about three quarters of an inch above the neckline there. And just sit straight down. Let's see if we can find our zipper head there. I have a pretty chunky zipper head. I'm gonna go past my presser foot there. ourselves a little bit of a tail again fold it to the right side fold it up and turn and we're still going to finish this edge here even if you didn't trim yours all right so fold 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 a little thick by folding that edge up if you're using a fabric that would uh, be okay by just being cut raw and then not having to fold it up I think that that is just fine okay now remember this is the one time you want your um, binding stitch to be to the right of the seam you always want it to be to the right of the seam I just want to make sure that you do it because you really can't go past a lot of times you can go a little past and it's fine Get our zipper a little further out of the way here. All right, so now we have a finished zipper edge there and we're gonna even up this edge here a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna put a little binding tail. And I'm gonna start from the right side of the zipper. Let's get rid of some of these threads here. like 80% of making your sewing look good. This is getting rid of all your threads. All right. So this is something I used to do a lot when I used to have to put these on the ends of zippers that I um, made for like zippered cases and things. And so what I used to do was I would fold it around the bottom of the zipper like this and I'd get those two edges lined up and then I would just push them together and let them flop over one or the one of the other. So this is I'll show in the steps. I'll stitch across the bottom here. So put the binding right across the bottom, lined up to the raw edge, and we'll just sew at the zipper, just like this. And now we're going to turn it over, and we're going to fold this, put the raw edges together. I barely have a big enough piece here. And then we're just going to let them fold over to one side. doesn't matter which way it goes. And then now I'm going to pull it all down like this. And then I just tuck all these ends in here. It's a little fiddlier than it seems by... I think it is the kind of the least bulky way to do it and it's nice and soft against the skin just like this lots of ways to do this this is just the little method I created 
All right. Now the zipper's in. All right. And so now let's finish our collar and neckline. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew our collar right sides together. So we're gonna keep that zipper in there. We're gonna fold it over and be kind of snug here because my zipper's pretty chunky and it's poking up right here. We're gonna pull it down, make it nice and flat. And we're gonna pull this inner collar down here. And it looks like my binding is going just past the neckline. All right, we're gonna sew that in along the tape edge. And I'm trying to get my binding edge right here, this the finished edge, to line up with the seam line of the neck there. I'm kind of just scrunching it a tiny bit to make sure it does that. A little thick right there. Okay, we're gonna trim this corner right here and then let's reinforce it since we did that. Make sure you don't accidentally grab your zipper or sew your zipper. Just like that, reinforce that corner. That's kind of a high abrasion area with the zipper being there. Make sure we didn't catch our zipper. All right, now poke it out just like this. So now we have this finished edge there. Remember that neckline seam is pointing up, just like that. I could get a little bit further in right there, couldn't I? Let's try that. Looks good on this side. Let's see on this side, does that look better? That looks a lot better. There we go. All right, let's do the same on the other side. Same thing. Gonna line this up. That's what it looks like. So we want this lining go just past, or the binding edge to go just past the next seam there. And remember we're raw side, we're, we're right sides together. So let's see the zippers pointing towards the inside collar. I'm not as worried about sewing this going like going up from the neckline towards the top as opposed to the way I did it on the other one. Usually I'm pretty consistent left to right. I, I'm more concerned with um, making sure I catch everything properly and this is such a short section. This isn't, that wouldn't be as critical. I have to get it right no matter what. All right, so let's see, did I get that binding this time? Yeah, I did. All right, let's get rid of all the threads. Trim down this binding here. And then let's reinforce our corner and then we'll trim it. Probably should have did that when I was already in there. All right, I push the zipper away from that edge. You can even reach in there and just kind of pull it. You really don't want to accidentally catch your zipper right now because it's pushed toward the collar. All right, now we're gonna trim this corner. And then turn it right side out, just like that. If you want a, a tutorial on how to add a facing behind the zipper, um, look for the men's quarter zip pullover um, that I sewed. It's the North Star Pullover by Love Notions. So look on my website, you'll find it, and then there'll be links to the videos. Um, I sewed that really professionally as well. And it did a really similar technique, but it also had a zipper facing and then the little facing kind of wrapped over the top of the zipper so that it wouldn't hurt the neckline. All right, so where are we at? Let's see how it's looking. All right, that's how it's looking. Let's see how it looks when it's zipped. Just like that. It's looking pretty good. Once we press this, this will look nice. You can top stitch this uh, if you want. Um, I'll caution you that the more you play around with this, kind of the more worked it gets, overworked it gets, and you gotta be really careful with it. So I think, you know, between my binding, what you're seeing here on mine, 
these wrinkles, it's, they're actually not wrinkles in the, um, the zipper sewing. It's because right here, you can, if I'll look at it like this, I'll kind of tilt it at an angle. This right here, it's the edge of the binding and the edge of the binding. And then there's nothing and then binding right here. And so it's just kind of like peaks and valleys in there right here. So something to note, maybe you want your binding, this right here, to be higher up and go right across and then that would kind of fill it all in. Maybe I'll end up um, top stitching it, but probably once I press it, it'll be completely fine. All right. All right, and so I'm going to line up this binding to go just past that neckline edge there because my idea is that I'm going to stitch in the ditch from the right side and catch it. It may not look perfect on the inside, but it'll look nicer on the outside if I do it that way. And so you just want this binding edge to go just past that neck seam. So if I line up this binding um, pennant, you can see it's just past that neck seam there. So when I stitch in the ditch in here, it'll catch it. And then what you really are concerned about right now is making sure that you don't get any uh, torquing, which is like a diagonal strain lines on your inner or outer collar. And that happens when you're not getting it lined up and you're pulling it like this or pulling it like that. It, you'll get some torquing lines. All right, and so I do just enough that it's not pulling away like this. Okay. Make sure you're pinning vertically or perpendicular, perpendicular to the seam. That way when you sew from the right side, you're not going to accidentally hit your pins or get them caught in your feed dogs. All right. Okay, so we have a lot of our pins and I almost forgot to put my labels in. So I just tacked them to the seam allowance of the neck seam here. One on each side of the center. This is for my brother. Um, and the one thing that I'm struggling with is this collar seems like it's a little too tall for the way I'm sewing it in. So if you're having that trouble, I understand. Um, and if you've watched this through before you're sewing, you might want to trim a little bit off of this piece here so that you can make sure that it's all going to fit in there without any uh, buckling. All right, so let's finish putting in. This isn't my favorite way to put one of these collars in. I'm just trying to make it look as store-bought as possible using the pieces as is. All right. All right, so we're gonna stitch in this ditch right here. So we're gonna pull the seam apart, kind of just pull it and get our needle in there. And I can feel my binding underneath there, so I know I'm gonna land on there. If you're doing this on polar fleece, it's gonna be almost completely hidden when you sew in this little neck seam here. All right, and so I kind of like do this thing with my hands where I'm kind of like making sure all of this is nice and flat. I adjust to make sure that my needle is still in there. A better stitch in the ditch is when you can um, open the, the seam allowance like this and it's flat. But because it's an overlocked seam and it's also both layers are pressed towards the collar, it's not quite really in the ditch. But we're going to get it as close to being in the ditch as possible. And we're just sewing right over the pins. They're in there, they're vertical. Here's one right here. As long as we're not sewing over the ball and that ball isn't getting stuck in our feed dogs, we should be okay. You can pull them out as you go by just reaching under and pulling them out.
All right, we're getting to this neckline, so I'm gonna start straightening things out. Now, it's gonna be quite thick with the binding there. There's a few better ways to do this, but I'm just trying to keep this as simple as possible. If you have a lot of trouble going through this kind of thickness, you can hand stitch the last few stitches if you like. I'm gonna use my hand wheel, and I'm just going to do stitch by stitch using my hand wheel going toward me. My machine can do this kind of thickness, but because it's so uneven, I'm gonna just make sure I have complete control. Now I'm doing my back stitch. I decided not to go up the edge of the zipper here. So I probably could have done the entire neck if I'd started at the front there and then going all the way. But I decided to do that just because um, I'm not gonna top stitch going down. And you can see I'm a little bit off right here. See that? My collar, pulled up right here when we were sewing it in along this diagonal edge. I'll still take that as a win since we're kind of trying to make this look as store-bought as possible. It looks okay. Definitely not my best work. All right. But look at that on the outside looks pretty darn good. All right, so let's just finish doing this. the needle in there first. Let's press her foot down. Do a few stitches and then do a back stitch. Make sure I'm staying in that seam for the back stitch. There we go. I think I got a couple of stitches off. Pull this pin out. It might be. Uh, oh no, that's fine. Okay. There we go. We want to make sure we don't lose our binding edge, though. I can feel it barely. I'm barely going to catch it. Let's pull it a little bit with the ball. And get rid of this pin here. I can feel it. It had been pushed a little too close to the seam. Let's get rid of this thread so I don't immortalize it. And then we'll meet our back stitch here from when we started. Uh, it looks pretty invisible on this side. Probably not so much on the other side, but let's see. Not bad. When you have this little edges of your binding, it's it looks like it's it's been um, permanently pushed down, but really what it is is that you are put so much pressure on it with your um, machine going over it when it's folded down, but you just need to push it back up. It'll be fine. All right, same thing I got there. I might need to put a few stitches in there. If the collar wasn't so angled, I think it would be a little easier to control this whole little area here. All right. All right. Now I'm trying to decide if I really want to top stitch this collar up here. I think I might just leave it. It looks pretty nice. Yeah, I think the only thing that really bugs me here is this diagonal here. All right. All right, so our um, last seams are our sleeves and armholes. So we're gonna go to the serger and we're going to sew our side seams of our garment here. And then we're going to put in these curved pieces to the sleeves. All right, so let's do the side seams first. All right, so this piece right here, the narrow bottom, curved bottom is the bottom of the sleeve. And then the lower point is the underarm and this side goes to the sleeve 
that you already have here. All right, so we'll take one pair here. This is the hem down here. Now I recommend starting at the top and going down towards that curve. It'll be a little easier. All right, and then we get down here. I like the seam line. So I have a gauge of where I'm at. There's no easing, but um, you just want to kind of keep track and make sure that you're going to end up with the same length. And see, even though the blue was poking out this way, as long as it lines up on the seam line, that's all that matters because now see this edge right here lines up right there. All right, there's one curve. This one will be a little easier um, because we're starting on the, the uh, piece, the inset that's contrast. It's a little easier when you have the curvier piece on top. You'll see at the bottom. All right, so now we're getting to the curve. And when I'm doing things like this, I usually keep the pieces separate like this so that I can kind of move them together as I go. I actually don't find uh, pins to be helpful when I'm doing this kind of sewing. And you really don't want to use pins with your serger. You can use clips or something like that though. So there we go. All right. Looks pretty good. Do the other one. All right, so we have both our sleeves and now we're gonna do the underarm seam of the sleeve. If you wanted to do any top stitching here, you should do that right now before you do this underarm seam. It'll be a lot easier. All right, and remember we're gonna match this right here. Now, if you uh, really have a tr trouble with thicknesses, you could offset these seams. I think that's gonna be totally fine. It's not gonna be a big deal. So I'm gonna press one up and one down at this juncture. It also kind of helps them to line up because they kind of nestle together and um, kind of hook onto each other. Like that. All right, turn one of your sleeves right side out. These sleeves don't have a front and uh, back, which is kind of unique. Um, and then you're going to put the sleeve inside the armhole here, lining up the underarm seam of the sleeve on the side seam of the garment. Keep track of what's the back of your garment, and we're going to press the side seam towards the back. I like to press the sleeve seam towards the front, like I said, just to offset the thicknesses right here. You don't have to do that. You can press them both towards the back too. All right. This isn't a typical set in sleeve where you have to ease in fullness. Oops, let's get that a little flatter there. It should just go right in there, but we do have some seams to match with our color blocking. There we go. All right, so remember what's, which is which way. 
meaning which is your front and which is your back. And with these seams here, I think it's probably better you press them the same way as each other. But it, again, if you have this a thickness issue, you may want to press one one way and one the other way and it'll be a lot easier. A lot of thread here. This one doesn't quite nestle the same way because you're coming at it at an angle. So you want this juncture where your color block is to line up on the seam line, not on the edge, on the seam line. Shoulder seam towards the back. I have a little extra there, that's why you're seeing a little bit more being trimmed. All right, again, here we are at the matching again, so match up on the seam line. This one nestles a little better, the seam back here. Okay. Should we look, see how we did here? Too bad. We'll probably get this one a little bit better. That one looks pretty darn good though. So maybe I'll fuss, fuss with this one here off camera. All right, let's do our other sleeve. And by fuss with it, I just mean I would take out those stitches, probably uh, position them and sew them on my regular machine in the seam allowance and then bring it back here to the serger to finish off the seam. Sometimes that's a really nice technique if you're trying to match things up that are super fiddly and you can't pin them because you're using your serger. I use the sewing machine and I sew across just a few stitches in the seam allowance and then that way I can secure it without using pins. Let's make our shirt uh, inside out. I don't know why I was just doing that, huh? All right, inside out. And then put your sleeve in there underarm to side seam. Let's get rid of some of these threads here. I don't just cut those tails off origin or right, right off the bat until I'm about to secure the seam. Alright, All right. again pay attention to where your back is. This is my back so I'm going to press this side seam towards the back and my sleeve seam towards the front just to offset the thickness. <laughs> All right, and for these serger tails, I'll usually take them to my single needle machine, my straight stitch, and uh, just tack them in the seam allowance just to secure them. There's a lot of different techniques you can do. All right. All right, so our last thing to do is our hems. Okay, so we're gonna cover stitch the hems. It's our last step. And if you're new to using your cover stitch machine, I suggest ironing the hem first, unless you're using something like a synthetic. Uh, another little trick is overlocking this edge with a serger. 
and then cover stitching it with the inside facing up. Generally when you cover stitch, you're working on the garment with the right side or the outside of the garment facing up. But this is a little tricky if you're new to cover stitch because you can't see your cut edge on the inside and if you're lining it up. So if you're kind of like wanting to finally get using your cover stitch the way that you usually see it with the two rows of stitching on the right side of the garment, I suggest ironing it first as kind of your next step. And then that way, when you're cover stitching from the right side, you don't have to worry about this being folded an even amount all the way around. And you can just line up your needle the same distance from the edge as if it's seam allowance. And then that way you don't have to worry about it. So I'm just gonna go and iron all three of my hems, my sleeve, my body, and then um, we're going to cover stitch. Okay, um, everything is ironed now. And so here's a couple more tips on hemming anything like this in a small circle or anything where you can't put the, whatever you're hemming around the arm of the machine so that this is flat on the bed. What I recommend is whatever surface that you're ironing or sewing on, like I'm gonna be sewing on the right side of this garment. So I've turned it inside out. If I were sewing on the wrong side, I would turn it right side out. And that's so that I can keep the garment above the bed of the machine. Cause if I were sewing on the inside of this garment like this and the sleeve was sitting here like this where it's you know underneath essentially what I'm sewing, it can get caught and sucked in there. So especially if you're doing like kids clothes, really small circumferences, this is much, makes it much easier. Um, I already had to sew a little bit, but cause, and then I realized I need to change my needle. So you'll see some holes right there. The other tip I have is if you've pre-ironed like this, whereas once you get good at cover stitching, you don't need to pre-iron, you'll get pretty good at eyeballing it and keeping it that way, depending on the pattern. The trick for me is I take the this sleeve hem, I'm gonna put it under the machine as if I'm about to sew it. I'm not going to. I'm gonna line up this left needle with this raw edge here, and then I'm gonna look and see where this edge falls on the bed of my machine. And then you can put a mark on your machine with tape or something. And then that way you can just keep, all you have to worry about is keeping this edge flush with whatever's on the bed of your machine. And you don't have to worry if you're going to catch this turn back edge um, right along the cut edge. All right, so I'll stick it in there. I'm sewing on the right side. And then um, I always start kind of behind a seam, like right here. The underarm is kind of, you know, where you would want the start and stop to be, but I don't like starting and stopping right on that thickness. All right, so I have my folded hem edge lined up on my machine where I want it. And so that means my left needle is lined up on this raw edge. And I'm gonna start sewing. Be careful of the thickness if your machine is kind of touchy about them. I'm just going slow. My machine actually likes thicknesses a lot. Remember, every time you gotta, you you know, kind of correct, straighten this out. Don't pull at it like, come at it like this and try and get it lined up. Try and keep this straight for, you know, a couple inches in front of the needle if you can. It'll be more accurate and you'll get a nice smooth line of stitches rather than it being kind of, you know, wiggly. Now, now I'm getting close to my start stop. I'm going to trim all these threads here. I don't really need those to get caught in my final stitching. I'm 
try and get right where you started the sewing, like sew a little bit right on top of what you've already sewn. And then finish out your edge, like your stitch edge, um, your end of your seam, however your machine likes to do it, so that your stitches are locked. And then just trim these threads. There we go, look at that, looks pretty good. All right, and then we'll do our others. All right, now we'll do the other sleeve and the body. Okay, one more sleeve and the body and then we're done. Okay, so uh, one last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure these tails at my underarms. And what I do is I just kind of bring them into the seam allowance and then I tack them down. There's lots of ways to do this. You can pull it through with a tapestry needle into the stitches of the seam allowance. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it, so. All right, I think that we're just about done. Okay, I think we're just about done. So the one thing that I have decided I'm going to do is this is kind of bugging me here how I have this chunk and I don't like the way it's laying on the front. And I remember that the way I like to do this is that I didn't, when I turned it under, it felt kind of different and I couldn't figure out why. Usually when I bind this, I bind the whole length of the zipper tape and I just leave a raw edge at the bottom of the zipper tape and then I finish it with my little um, tab here and then this way you don't have this like gap right here which kind of leaves it uneven on the right side of the garment you can kind of see the depression on the right side and then it kind of calls attention to it so all right so I'm just gonna remove this little section right here of the binding just take out the stitches unfold it and hopefully it's long enough to reach under this tab I'm gonna remove the tab also and probably have to replace it with a new piece of fabric. Um, and then I can even shorten this. So I could, if I wanted, just cut it off, you know, to make it easier on myself. Uh, so we'll see when I get there. So I'm just gonna remove the binding. This isn't gonna disrupt any of the outer sewing or visible sewing. All we're doing is popping out the finished edge of the binding. And we're just gonna re-sew that part. You gotta make sure that you're removing your last stitches of the binding. For this side, it was, I finished my binding from this side here of the binding. On this one, I finished the binding on the zipper side that faces to the body. Whichever one was your last one that you stitched to finish the binding, remove that one. All right, so we just need to get a little bit shorter for the um, tab here. So that's not too bad. I think I can safely cut it off and sew it back on right here, as long as I have enough space between here and the bottom. So we're just gonna cut it off. Okay, I have my new little tab piece, which I just cut like one and three eighths inch wide, just a little leftover piece of binding. I put a little interfacing on it to stabilize it. And I made this six inches long, but that's plenty. All right, so let's finish our binding here. Let's get it back to where we wanted it. So we need to kind of sew it, continue the sewing of the first leg of the stitching for the binding. Just go right off the edge of the zip tape, just like that. And now get rid of some of these stitches and move some of this messy stuff and kind of tuck that in there. 
finish the binding. This is all in the seam allowance of the garment, so you're not catching it in there at all. You're just affecting the zipper tape. Let's do this side now. So we could probably take out a few more stitches so we can get our seam started in the right spot. Get this nice and flat, best we can here. Just looking for that seam. Line this up on the zipper tape. That. I don't really need to back stitch since it's going to get caught in the tab. And then same thing. Let's get rid of some of these stitches. And then we'll sew the rest of this binding. See some more threads there. You can see my jersey got a little chewed up right there from the seam ripper. Jersey isn't very forgiving when you're doing any kind of seam ripping. But we'll just tuck it in there and no one will know. There we go. And so now our binding goes all the way down into the zipper tape. It doesn't look as great, but this is a pretty casual sew along here. All right, so we're going to trim this so that it's even. And I'm going to do my same little trick with the tab here and so let's see this is the right side so let's go like this I'm gonna stitch it down first just on the raw edge there like that and then we'll wrap it I'm gonna fold this one back and then this one can just go straight across just like that and we'll line up the raw edges there and we'll trim them flush. And now we're going to stitch across the end again. And now I pull it all to the bottom like this. And then we just fold in this edge here. This one's kind of tricky. If you want, you can tack this part right here where it overlaps, uh, that would probably be the most helpful or at least pin it together so that it stays together. What I do is I always fold that part first, pinch it with my finger, pinch the other side, and then I use my pointer to kind of smooth it all out. And it gets a little uneven um, and that's okay. As long as I have it tucked in there, I can straighten it out. Jersey is not the kindest fabric to do this with. All right, so once I have it kind of like this, I, I make sure it's straight and I will often do this, pull my, put my awl in there and kind of pick it to pull it straight. And now we just sew across the end. No one's really gonna see this. It's just a nice finishing detail and it makes it soft. It's not even the fabric I would normally use, but I just wanted to make it as visible as I could for this video. There's a little thread here that's been bugging me that I can see you want to get rid of. All right, now we're done. Let's check it out. Okay, here we go. Here's our finished zip hoodie Sierra fleece pullover. I'm not sure I would have still top stitched this right here. I could probably could have let that go. Um, or maybe I would top stitch the sleeves. I don't know. There's just something unfinished looking when you're using pull or using just regular fleece. The hemp fleece is a little strong, um, and so you got to be careful. Some of the some of these like hemp fiber fabrics are pretty tough to sew on. So I don't know if maybe I wouldn't do the top stitching again. But all in all, I think this looks pretty good, and I think my brother will like it. Let's see. Is this looking? This looks a lot better in person. <laughs> see, 
There's a little shadow there that is just the crook, the corner there. See, it's fine. Once we press it, it'll look really nice. The collar's nice and fuzzy against the neck. Not too bad for the first time sewing it. And the uh, color blocking is pretty sharp. 